Oh, no, they said they needed to upgrade, so. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. So, but, no, there's one guy sitting there that treated me three weeks back. Do you, you still, have a phone in here? Do you want to conference in? There's a phone. Franklin has um, two phones, yeah. Okay. Okay, it's 10 o'clock, we call this meeting in order for our kind of commissioners. Stand to the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, 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 States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Started or go and get comments out. I'll let you go, Nicole. I I didn't I didn't ask for it, so I don't. Me uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's where if we had if there was a discussion that you made. I guess I would have I would have asked you put on the agenda. So I didn't ask for this. So I don't know where we're still going here. Okay. Nicole, let you start then. Okay. Um, I guess I'm not sure where this where this is coming from from the from the commissioner's point either. Um, I think this was a meeting facilitated by you three um, to fund GIS for the county, the the mapping program. I, I'll speak for the commission. This started about a year ago when. We realized all of a sudden that you had a responsibility, um, but were unable to follow through on that responsibility. A relationship we understood that was years long um, was no longer working. And uh, we've been hearing for quite a while about issues coming from this, this uh, breaking communication, breaking relationship. Now that we're at the end of the budget, um, I did ask Dave Klaus to actually renegotiate this. I understand he negotiated the agreement between the two departments 10-ish, 15 years ago. It was long before I came on board. Um, I did speak to him when we started getting more and more reports of what the ramifications were becoming. Yep. And uh, he said he would, and I think he just got busy. I know he's been working on a bunch of different stuff. But now that we're at the end of the budget, Season, we need to figure this out. We need to figure out how you guys at 911 and dispatch are going to get the information you need. You're going to stop getting calls at night wondering from deputies where roads are. And uh, people who need maps, who need atlases, which are 10 years old now, will have the information they need. So how can we work together to get done what we need to for people's safety? That's all this is about. So, um, yeah, I guess it was brought up by the commission. deputies are called? Because I, I, the first week of my FTO program is my deputies have to drive every single road in this county. So I want to know which deputy is calling it then. Mm -hmm. I've had two phone calls, um, and not at night, just while I'm not at work, on my cell phone. Um, one of them was because it was a road name change. Bar so none. that wasn't, huh? Bar none. No, uh, between Doe and. Anyway, and then the other one, they, they couldn't find the road, and it wasn't a subdivision. So. South Hill? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know exactly which road that one was. These were during the day? Um, no, you know, one of them was in the evening, one was during the day, but, you know, while I wasn't working, and, you know, they, I don't mind, I don't mind answering calls on my, on my cell phone, you know, for folks wondering where roads are, but um, if all of the roads were on the dispatch machines, uh, I don't think that would be a problem for them because it does take time for them, you know, from, from where they're at in dispatch to, to try and find the road and then to call me and find out where the road is. It's just that takes minutes that they may not have. Well, I guess I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject a little bit. The, the, I, I understand exactly where we're coming from. And, and I, Brandon did have a conversation with Dave Klaus as well. And the, the whole part of this process, and I'm, I'm not going to say I'm against it, 
I'm not going to say I'm completely for it, but I'm also going to not say I'm completely against it. Was the fact is, is that back in 2000, now three to five, uh, the county didn't have the funding for GIS, and so they did come to an agreement under then Sheriff Thompson and Ben Knapp and, and whoever the commissioners were at the time. Unfortunately, they also never put it down in writing. Uh, I asked for a resolution from Ann. Uh, there, not one exists. Uh, I asked for a contract of what the services were going to be. There doesn't one exist. Uh, and so, in, in an aspect, is it turned into a good old boy uh, handshake deal, and, and now here we are, uh, 12, 15 years later, trying to figure out what we need to do. And so, under the infamous words of Cherry True out of the former uh, state of Montana Supreme Court Justice, it wasn't written down, it doesn't exist. And so that's where I'm at. Is everybody has an MOU or something of that nature, um, some sort of agreement in place? And every person, since I've been sheriff in the last year and a half or 18, 19 months, whatever it's been, every government agency, whether it be the Fish and Game or Forest Service or DNRC or whoever else, who wants to act upon something within the county or have some sort of agreement, has updated those things with me. And so I guess that's where I'm at is that I, I understand exactly where we need to be updated. My issue is, is that it's already public information. It's done by a public employee. Um, as taxpayers, we're already paying her to put it in the system. Um, for us to then pay to get it out of the system is what I define as legalized money laundering. So, because all we're doing is we're switching funds. And 901 funds are allocated for certain, certain things. And we all know what those are, uh, and GIS is part of it. So, if we're paying for equipment, we're paying for maintenance on things, great, let's have a specification of what we're going to do. The same conversation I had last year. Um, Let's describe what it is that we're doing, what we're paying for, instead of just, here's an $18,000 bill, pay it. Um, I mean, I got a bill on my thing right here from Anderson Wilkie or Red's funeral home for a, for a burial on Jermaine Wells. It's broken down dollar by dollar, cents by cents, on what I, I am paying for. And so, that's just how we just do business now in 2017. It's not, we're not back in 2003, we're not in 2007, we're not in 2010. So we have to be up on the times, we have to do things the way they're supposed to be done. So then, as things move on, if it's a con contract, if it's a contract as it's written in the budget, if it's a contract and service, there should be a contract, and that contract should be negotiated on a, an annual or biannual basis so that we're making sure that the needs are being met on both sides of the fence. And, and that doesn't exist. And unless you know one that I don't, I'll ask a you. contractor and MOU? Yeah. Nope. Okay. No, they're absolutely so, not. So no. we're trying to, you know, we can make a lot of assumptions. We can we can try to read the past of what our forefathers and foremothers said uh, in, in meetings uh, that occurred a long time ago. But really, in the aspect of in the grand scheme of things, it does need to get put in a perspective that we know what we're getting and we can justify it. No different than redoing a local agreement with the city council last year is that there's got to be some expectations set forth. Um, and I think at that point, then that's a discussion point. That's where this discussion comes in, is when that's, when something's there that I think we can both agree on uh, and, 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 go, and go in that aspect. Um, I don't know if Brandon has anything to say on that. Or <coughs> I, I guess I've been, I'm trying to, you know, myself is to learn what, you know, what does the county, if, and I've been asked to, to ask the question is, if there's no public safety whatsoever, no sheriff's office, does this information still have to exist? And I don't know the answer. Does it? Yes. And who are all the stakeholders? And if, if we're going to pay for something, um, why don't all the stakeholders pay? Um, it's the same with the sheriff and the radio situation. You know, it's, why is it just our responsibility to pay for the radios when fire, ambulance, roads, um, state, they all use it? Um, but we're footing a big bill. I mean, we did, fire did pitch in a little bit. But, um, you know, it's the same thing. Who's all the stakeholders and does everybody have to pay in this? I know Dana uses it. Um, I'm assuming the IRS uses it, fire, ambulance, medical, sheriff's office, um, state agencies, you know. So I, I'd like to see the breakdown of does this have to exist without us? And I don't know if you guys can answer that question or maybe you, Nicole. Yeah, I certainly can. And I totally agree with you because 
Um, yeah, going back, you know, the history of it, uh, we needed GIS for the county. We didn't, there was, there was no GIS being done for the county. I was two months into my employment here for the county, and they said, hey, you know, I was working for Melissa Tumler, um, the sanitarian at the time, and the planner. And I said, hey, would you be willing to take on GIS? I have no idea what that means, but yes, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So, um, Ben Naff, uh, I believe he was the undersheriff at the time, right? He, he was kind of the techie guru, and he negotiated this um, between the sheriff's office, or for the sheriff's office, and my department to fund GIS that they would pay $22,950 a year, just a flat amount um, they would pay for GIS. And so the way we worked that, it literally was a conversation between myself, um, Melissa, who was my, my supervisor at the time. Um, I don't even recall Rich being at those, those meetings, but I, <laughs> um, and then state 911, that yes, this is, this is how this would work. I would send a bill to the sheriff's office uh, twice a year, for I think it was eleven thousand five something whatever half of twenty two five ninety one. Um, I would send a bill twice a year to the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office would send that bill on to state nine one one. State nine one one would reimburse them. They would put it into my account. Kind of a roundabout way of doing it. But that's anyway. That's what they did. So um, fast forward to when Brenda Ludwig was the sheriff. About 2013, I believe, she said, you know, we can't be paying for everything. Because really what it was, it was half of my budget because I was paid out of planning and sanitarian, which was one, one budget, um, one fund. And then the other half of my budget was paid for GIS. So it literally was just half of my budget. And she said, you know, that's probably not the best way to do that. I need a breakdown. I need to see your, your budget and I will tell you what I will and will not pay for. Great. So there were some things in there. So I'd sent her the bill for my budget, and she wouldn't always pay that. So like the $18,000, that was just saying, okay, this is the GIS half. You pick what you want to pay out of it. Um, and that's how that worked. So, you know, it, it seemed to be working. They were, I, I felt they were getting what they, they were needing. I was never hearing otherwise. Um, you know, so I would input all of the data, addresses, roads, uh, new subdivision lots, and phone numbers at the time until we, we scrubbed those and took those out. But anyway, so I would input all of that data and I would send it on to um, the outside company that the sheriff's office agreed to use was Bullberry. So I would send it to Bullberry, Bullberry would scrub the data, make sure it was clean, and then push it into dispatch machines. I would print atlases, maps. So um, again, I, I never heard that it wasn't working and so I just kept on going that way and so when Wynn came on, I know that, you know, when I sent you this bill in my budget and I put a sticky note in there that said, you know, I'm sure you're going to have questions. This is a big bill. Give me a call. Um, but I agree with them that they shouldn't be paying for everything. I do maps for the commission. I do voting district maps. I do maps for the public. Um, solid waste needs data. Road department needs data. Um, you know, just individuals off the street that come in and say, hey, can you print me a map? People looking to move here constantly, constantly are wanting, wanting maps. Um, done. I don't charge for those. I don't know how to charge for those. I, I don't know if I should be charging for those. Is this, is this uh, a function of community development that I should be providing that service to the public? I don't really want to have, you know, oh, you can't come into my office until you pay, but um, they, they shouldn't be saddled with, with that whole bill. Because really, the atlases, I don't know that, that they are the only ones that should be using, or that should be paying for those, because those are expensive. Those ones that never tear paper, those are $120. And so when I, when I had those printed, you know, I authorized it uh, from Brenda, and that was 2007. So still, it's 10 years worth of data that is not on those atlases. Um, and she said, yeah, that's fine. You know, go ahead and have them printed. But then fire got them, uh, ambulance got them, and they didn't pay for them. When people come in and want wall maps, you know, the big maps, I charge $20, but that's just the cost of printing. That's not the cost of creating. So the sheriff's office is getting the shaft, kind of, because they're having to pay for all of these services for everyone else. And to answer your question, GIS would still have to exist without you. I mean, it, it would have to. People still need addresses. You know, there, there's still going to be information that needs to be out there. And so... Which basically one of those things that I did say at one time is that if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to have uh, subdivisions and creating roads, you still have to have planning. It doesn't have anything to do with law enforcement, any component. It, the fact is, is if you're going to approve land development, you still got to have a goal regardless. 
And that was my argument last year, is that it still has to exist. She, and, 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 and I understand why they started it back in whenever they did it. But the fact of the matter is, is that that's just part of, if, if we're going to develop the county and we're going to develop our communities, we need to develop a funding source uh, that, that is equitable across the board for everybody. It's not, it shouldn't just be the responsibility of my office to make sure that GIS is functional for the entire county when everybody, even in the course of course, is, is taking use of it, fire, medical, uh, solid waste, roads, and everybody else. Everybody, you know, it, it, that's called a stakeholder. You know, if we're if we're paying all paying for a service and everybody gets a piece of the comment, uh, and, and then it's not just me that has to come down here and and argue a point. So, um, I, I guess that's that's how I feel about it. May I ask a clarifying question just to make sure we're all on the same page? Now, it's news to me that it's coming out of your budget. I always thought uh, that it was nine one one, and and I think you just said Nicole. You would send an itemized bill to Brenda. Mm -hmm. She would work with 911 on what they would pay. And then you said that sometimes that the bulk of that wasn't paid because anything not covered by 911 wasn't paid. Mm -hmm. Is that a, is that the right understanding? Or does it indeed yes. come out of it's, it's, the, it, your budget? It's it's our 911 account. So we have state. To, so we have to so we have an expenditure and revenue side on the 911 fund. And anything that we spend, if it's something outside the norm, we call them and say, okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we'll cover this, we'll cover this, we'll cover this. Okay. Who makes that decision? Who controls that money? That, well, it depends on, it depends on what it is. Um, it's mostly uh, yeah. Rhonda Sullivan. Yeah. Who, who do we talk to? At Department of uh, uh, 901. Should we have her on the phone, by the way? Mm -hmm. um, and I do have her number handy. Division of I know it's 444. I have it written down in my office. <laughs> Let's just start. Yeah, two four two zero. Oh, okay. No, yeah, no, no, no. she is expecting us to call if you want to. So I mean, that's her. just to just to scrap the the mapping issue is that uh, on the sheriff's office side we well we got approved for our GPS, uh, uh, grant and for the in car mobile computing and they'll have Good. you know maps will be on there we're not going to need that so we don't need to really discuss no point in printing them now. But you'll need the GIS information the GIS for information that. To go, yeah, it'll be uploaded into dispatch. Well, it'll go out to all the computers. So. so it's my understanding then, since 911 wasn't paying for a lot of those items, it's really been general fund or planning that's been paying for those maps. Um, maybe not the atlases, but the maps. Mm -hmm. well, we which is fine. It's just let's all know what the yeah. facts are so that we're all talking yeah. on the same page. Yeah. What was that number again, Brandon? Uh, 2420, 444, 2420. So is, it, is there anything that prohibits us from a fee schedule if someone just walks in off the street and wants her print a monster map that we can't charge to cover those costs? What? We had a resolution for our office a few years ago. And so if you come in and if you... Hey, Rhonda, Nicole Brown calling. How are you? To encompass a fee schedule. Good. So we're in a meeting with the sheriff's office here. Um, do you mind if I put you on speakerphone? I charge for reports. Okay. If you Perfect. want a police report, you have to. Are you there? Um, it's my company charger. Yep. Can you hear me, Rhonda? I would just take up there. Yes. No. And generally, for anything like that, the public does pay a fee. Um, it's it's other you know EMTs that come in. Fire. It's Nicole. I'm going to try this again. <laughs> okay. She said she was giving them to the public for free. Yeah, All right. Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Rhonda, we are, this is the commissioner meeting with the sheriff and the attorney and uh, accounting. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What can I help you with? <laughs> well, I guess what, what we're wondering is... Um, well, I guess maybe you're the better one to ask the question, Nicole. Perhaps what is covered, what is it? Is that where we want um, to start? Sure. So, Rhonda, can you can you hear me okay? Yeah, there's a little cracking going on. It is a crackly sound. Um, so, I guess we were just curious, what can and what cannot be funded, um, as far as GIS is concerned, through state 911 funds? Um, atlases, maps, wage, can all of that be covered uh, through state 911 funds? 
There is a document on our website that shows exactly what and what cannot be used for 911 funds, our guidelines. And under item two, it says costs associated with developing the master street address guide in the E911 database. Um, costs associated with maintaining the MSAG and the database. Uh, let's see here. Where's the other one? I think there was one on maps here. Let me search for just a second. Uh, maps, wall maps, map books, computer-based maps, etc., including map racks and or stands. That is an allowable expense. Oh, okay. That is an allowable or is not an allowable? allowable. It is an allowable. Okay, thank you. I will allow them to spend money on that. Okay. If they so choose. I wonder where that was coming from. <laughs> and under the same document number nine addressing uh, the GPS. Um, also on addressing, there's a whole section on addressing. Yep. And one item is GIS compilation of the data and final map output in both hard copy and digital copy. Um, let's see here. Purchase of hardware and software necessary for GIS work. Costs associated with the addresses and producing paper maps without the use of GIS. 911 prohibited shares of costs associated with web based GIS maintenance. Is that the last one? That was the last one. So it is an allowable expense. It's just up to them whether they want to use their money for that or not. I can't make them. So you only have a certain amount allocated to you, correct? Oh, you just went right. Down. Yeah, and it just went right. down. Ron, this is when the sheriff paid. How are you? I, I understand under legislation we lost a bunch of money that because they're going to the putting it over on the enhanced 901 this year. Is that right? Right. Okay. We just had a House Bill 61 passed and it redid our whole statute. And in, within that new statute, it says that we have to come up with new rules and new guidelines. So all this is going to change. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, and, and, and when it comes to funding, what what percentage came down on that this year? I can't hear you. I hear crackling. What was this? What was the percent that came off of what the current current fees being paid to nine hundred one? Wasn't there a reduction in it? No, there wasn't. Okay. As long as we keep collecting, are you still there? Yes. Oh, as long as we keep collecting from the providers. You know, as long as they keep their subscriber counts up, our money will stay the same. But if they start losing subscribers, then we lose that dollar per subscriber. So it just depends on the subscribers. Okay. That's why we can't budget, you know, as far as what's coming up. But with this new house bill, there's going to be a section on grants. And the money that is not used in the wireless provider fund, the one that's kind of funded right now, um, we set aside money to upgrade the network, money to upgrade the TSAPs that are really, really far behind with the grant program, and then money for a GIS study within Montana. Okay. So we're just starting our subcommittees on that, and that's where um, Nicole comes in on the GIS portion. Okay. So... So if we went back to kind of the old way and put it into writing and agreement, and Nicole went back to giving you guys an itemized list quarterly or semi-annually, and you sent it to 911 and they agreed to certain items and not certain items, and then community development picked up the, the, the rest of it that's not covered by 911, is that agreeable to you guys as a partnership moving forward? I think we have to look at numbers. I mean, that's, I mean, that, and, and back to that original statement we both made, is that <clears throat> this is not, this isn't my burden to bear, and, and not to sound like an ass, but this isn't mine. The fire department needs to realize that there's a cost of doing business. 
it, it takes my staff, the ones that come out of my budget, to, to dispatch those guys to get those little reports to them, get them that information, to get them the address that they need to go to. That doesn't, the fire department doesn't pay for that. Medical doesn't pay for that. Road department doesn't pay for that. Sanitation doesn't pay for that. Everybody else doesn't pay for it. But it's my, it's, it's for everybody's looking at me as a bird to bear to, to pay the bill. And I think that if that's what it's going to be, then there needs to be some criteria. Um, no, no, no I, mean, I think I didn't say your budget, but well, 911. Is, one. I know. A, exactly what Rona said. It's up to me whether or not I pay the bill. It's that 911 funds, those come to the office of the sheriff and that PSAP down there. So it's up to me whether or not I pay the bill. And so it's not, it's not a standalone entity. It, it, it does require one, as long as it meets the criteria through Rhonda's office, it's up to me whether or not I pay it, whether I put that claim in. And so, um, you know, a lot like our radio, our radio system, that has been a very contentious thing with me and trying to get people on board who utilize that public safety communication system, no one really wants to dive in and help. So to me, it's like every time I turn around, I feel like I'm, somebody's wanting to reach inside my pocket to help them out, but they don't want to reciprocate and do the same. So I would like to see it. Right now, I've got providers that are saying, we can do your mapping uh, for $4,500 a year and do your maintenance. Okay, well I can get that for 4500 and then I get uh, a bill from the cold for eighteen five, which is the which is talkable. But the fact is is that that proposal that comes to me through like Sue Zerker, he gives me a, an itemized thing of this is what we're gonna do for you. This is what we're gonna do it by, this is what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna maintain. If there's a problem, it becomes our burden to bear, not yours, and blah 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 blah. This is what you're responsible for, this is what you're responsible for. And, and there's a there's a there's a contract, and I think that that's where we're missing the boat on this. Is that there's nothing in writing that says that either one of us are, are responsible for each other's actions. Or, or you know, does that sound right? I mean, and I'm not trying to be argumentative. It's just the way we do business now. And so, I think if we had something in place that said we can do A, B, C, and D, and you're going to do E, F, and G. And we're going to do it by this time frame. And if we don't like it, we can have a discussion about it within 90 days of the time that this MOU or, or whatever comes up again. And then it's a working document. I think that's what we need to have in place to make this work. And I don't. And I think that you have something like that, then we can have a discussion about what it is that do I agree with this cost or do I not agree with this cost? And maybe there's some things we can do different here versus over here. You know, mapping and, and buying buying atlases and stuff is going to be irrelevant when I have an MDT in the car that's got a mapping system on it. So I don't need to buy those, mm -hmm. right? So those are things that we need to talk about. But there needs to be something in place to have that conversation to start with. So, that makes sense? Absolutely. And you know, my biggest concern, you know, still is just making sure that, that you have the most up-to-the-minute information in the dispatch center. Um, electronically, yes, yep. you're right, you know, something tangible would be good for now, an atlas or a map, but really I just want to make sure that you have all of that data on your dispatch machines, which I know you don't. Um, you know, before Mason passed, he was in my office trying to figure out how many new homes and new roads. And there are a lot of them. Just in the last 10 years that are not on those atlases, in the last two years, at least 90. At well, least 90. And, and most of them are on, most of them are on their FTO program because I went through and wrote down every road in the county. Oh, okay. So they know about them, um, they just don't have a map to show them where to get mm -hmm. to. So, it's just things like that. Things have fallen through the cracks, and, and things have, for lack of better words, we've always done it this way, so we're going to continue to do it that way. And obviously, I hope by now, you guys realize it's not how I do business. I'm, I'm not, we're, we're not going to keep doing things the same way, expecting a different result. Um, it's just not me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess in, in my mind, I, I, and, and I think Nicole agrees, is that we just need to have something written up to say this is what, what, we're, what we're needing. Uh, this is what we're looking for. Uh, this is and, and, and kind of go back and forth on it, and then go from there. That, I guess that's my opinion. Absolutely, I think if, if we know each other's expectations, yeah. I expect you're going to pay your bill. You expect that I'm going to give you good data. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's really all it comes down to. And even if it was if it was uh, just the same amount every year, then that way you'd know moving into the into your budget season. That, okay, this is an expense that's going to stay this way until we renegotiate any type of contract. Because really, you shouldn't have to be paying 
for everything, for everyone. Um, I, yeah, I think that that's, that's going to be the best way to move forward, is just, just to come up with some type of a, a contract. Can you two get together and, and put something together mm -hmm. as a unit? I mean, I don't think it needs to come again to a commission meeting. I'd really like to see you guys put together something that works for you. Maybe pull in the EMTs and the road department and, and all the other entities and um, put something together, the well, city we, too. And, you know, and that's the thing, is, and, and that's the hard part of this conversation, Dave, is that no, there's, no, there's no information. There's no history to go back and look at because there's no, there's no, there's no documentation. And bills. I, that's, I mean, you know, yeah. I really, I mean, yeah. that's, that's yeah. what I have. I have printed off all of the bills yeah. that I sent to the sheriff. And you're right. I mean, it was working, and so I didn't think there was an issue. But obviously, um, and I shouldn't say an issue, but I, I absolutely understand where you're coming from. When you get a copy of my budget and this bill, well, why yeah. should you pay this? There's no explanation. The, yeah, and, and it's not because I'm trying to be angry. Mm -hmm. But I feel that if somebody comes into my office and says, why did you spend this money on this, I should be able to have a reason to tell them. I should be able to say, I should be able to articulate exactly why I spent that money. Because we're all tasked in being good stewards of the tax dollars. So if I can't, again, reason why I redid the interlocal agreement with the city, I can't articulate why I'm asking for this money. Now I can, but before I couldn't. So, and that had been something that had been in place since the early 1970s, for Christ's sakes. So, or 80s. So it just, things have to change. So, uh, I'm not trying to be difficult. Just, it's just, so I'll probably have her work with Brandon, though. Um, he's been doing a lot of the, the other stuff with Zerker and everything else, and his desk is a lot cleaner than mine, so we'll mucky his up. Mm -hmm. That works. I have, okay. I have a question. What's the current arrangement for fire, ambulance, search and rescue? How do they get maps, and, and then how would you, under this agreement you guys are discussing, how would you anticipate they would get current maps going forward? They would, if we, I mean, if we went forward and got the information into the 911 system right now, the dispatch would be able to direct them where to go prior to any maps. But I think if they want maps, it's going to be their responsibility to come to Nicole and ask for them um, because we're not going to need them. And so, are we talking physical printed maps like yeah. on the wall? We're not talking about a computer system. No, it's yeah, it's map books. They're really, I mean, they are nice books to have, but okay. we're not going to need them. And so, well, how do they get them now? Currently, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't have. Them they had a 2007 version because there was never money authorized to spend to purchase new atlases. Um, so they have a 2007 version. Okay. So is there a different? I mean, do they each have funds that they're supposed to be doing this, or I guess is this the issue? Is it all this supposed to come out of 911, or that's right. the, we don't, we don't. Yeah, that's the thing. Is there's that's the unsolved yeah. question? Here. We just don't know. Yeah. Well, rural uh, IBS has always been on a 911 right. funded like project. Clear like back to when I was DES coordinator in 1997. I think we had Tinsley on working on that for a couple of years. Way to eat yourself. Right. <laughs> Can we let Rhonda go? Do you think yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Rhonda. Thanks, Rhonda. I had a couple items just oh. uh, run by uh, as well, a couple just suggestions. Um, I monitor the 9-1 funds annually. Whatever the dispatch center sends them on or spends it on, I monitor it annually and make sure that nothing was misspent. So they are watched on those. And also, um, with Next Generation, the, all the routing of these calls are going to be done on lat long. So we need to move forward with that, and that's what our GIA is going to be about. And then the third thing was this grant program that we're going to come up with. It's a year out because we got to make all the rules and the guidelines and everything. But if you get all your stuff together and then send it in with a grant request, then maybe you can receive extra money from that other provider fund for your grants. So that might be an option as well. And then I think Michael had... Uh, uh, GIS here in Helena too. They put out grants. No, Rhonda, didn't we go to Next Gen last year? And Pardon our, me. Didn't didn't our office go to Next Gen last year? When we up your office? Yeah. What do you mean? Our peace app, because I thought all of our nine one calls come in on lat long right now. We, right, and that's through a separate provider that sends you that lat long. <laughs> Okay. It's not done by your system and not by the phone. The phone is picked up on a tower and sent through. 
can barely hear you. Can you hear that crackling? Yeah. Okay. So the, when the call is made, it hits the tower, and the address is based on the tower right now. All that's going to go away as far as it goes, and it'll be sent to you directly with a Latin long. Once your equipment is upgraded with a digital and IP based system, and that's what we're going towards right now with next gen. Okay. That makes sense. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's my two cents worth. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. Thanks, Rhonda. All right. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. All right. It has to be able to translate from that long to an address. But Mm -hmm. um, huh? We're uh, Michael Fashway with the state nominated me. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to serve on the uh, 901 Advisory Council for the state. So we're going to be working on that actually starting Monday, um, our very first meeting. So. <laughs> hey Nicole, is there an issue at all with what we've been discussing today with the proprietary nature of what you do? Um, you know, not anymore since they they scrubbed the, the phone um, information, okay. um, you know, because there used to be unlisted numbers that I had available to me, uh, so that was difficult when folks wanted a file. Um, I would have to go in and, and, you know, remove all of that before I could send it out to them, not to the sheriff's office, because, you know, that's literally, you know, the, it was like this triangle. I would input all of the data, send it to Bullberry in North Dakota, I believe is where their office was. Uh, electronically, and then they would do whatever they needed to do, make sure the roads, roads closed and routed correctly, um, and then they would push it onto the machine. And so it's still, you know, it was working that way, but now it's just me. I'm just holding all of this information. And so I think now, and that's what Zerker's role is, because Norton, who's no longer with Zerker, but he used to work for Bullberry, and then he went to work for this company, Zerker, and took us with him, took Broadwater County with him. Um, and so that's what Zerker's role is, you know, they're just going to make sure that the data is, is good. Um, because anytime I put in a road, you know, I can go in and test it. I have the dispatch um, also on my computer, the, the capabilities to, um, to route. And so then I can check and make sure that, you know, if it's 517 Broadway, it doesn't take us all around town to get to 517, that it's the most direct route. Anyway, that's the purpose of Zerker. Now. Which um, we're not with Zerker mapping yet. Okay. Um, but we're still with Bulberry and it's changed to Insight. Oh, okay. Their name has just changed, which is Norton created that company. He went to Zerker. Zerker honors Insight mapping and lets it be on their system. However, it's not Zerker mapping. It's, it's still not. Zerker mapping is way better than Insight, which the grant that, that we wrote um, for the mobiles has Zerker mapping put into it. Mm. So hopefully we'll be switching. And, the but year. they probably don't have the residence file, the houses. Well, I haven't looked at like it. Like the somehow. addressing. Zerker? Yeah. Oh yeah, they. Uh, I don't know how they get it or what, but mm -hmm. yeah, it'll. It it's it's a it's better to have Zerker mapping than the insight for the mobiles for the routing. Okay. Purposes and to see the location of the officer's uh, computer itself. So I wonder if they got it from Insight, because the, you know the, the information I put out there, it is, it's proprietary, I don't publish it anywhere. Um, so any new address I put in my system, um, I date it, there's a date stamp file. Um, and so then you'd be able to see, you know, and then also it makes it easy to say how many new houses went in in the last 10 years. Well, I can, you know, show you. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking that Zerker, you know, maybe if their mapping is better and their technology is better, but they're still not going to have They'll have the roads because they can, anybody can use Google Map and you know pull the roads. That Google Map is a is a horrible resource to rely upon for for roads because they're not always correct. But they won't have residence files, house files, unless I give them to you. <laughs> well, I, Insight must get it. I know uh, maybe contracts with Zerker or something because mm -hmm. I know they they have that stuff so and so they probably have old data though I guess is what I'm saying be, yeah the most current data that we have that you have yeah which is two years old yeah. okay I right. guess the last thing I would say is whatever this agreement is let's make sure we do have the all the customers uh, in it somehow search and rescue fire who else would need to be 
ambulance, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Is that about it? it? Well, 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 search and rescue would just fall under the sheriff's office. That's our responsibility. So, I mean, yeah, they're assigned to the sheriff. But aren't yeah. you going to have, like, isn't each vehicle going to have a, a map set in it? So, regardless of the driver, I don't know how. Yeah, much. they would. They won't have computers, so. The only thing I would suggest is is to have a hard copy backup printed out inexpensively in case of crash during a big, big emergency. We lose everything. We really need to go back somewhere so we can actually photocopy a bunch of maps, hand them out to yeah, officers. That's, or, and that's a good idea. I mean, I mean I currently print it out like once every time it's updated so that we can actually use that if we don't have any electronic stuff happen. Mm -hmm. Well, we can print our own. You know, there's Atlas programs out there that I could purchase if I had money. Not, I'm, not, I'm not looking at you when I say that. Um. Yes, yes, she, is. <laughs> she, she did. Out of I know, and everybody was like, oh, I didn't mean for the show. Sure, no. <laughs> if, um, you know, so I could purchase an Atlas program um, to print those atlases myself. It wouldn't be on that, that awesome never tear paper, but they would be significantly cheaper to where you know, every year they can be updated, or, you know, gosh, if there's a big subdivision that goes in an area, we just print out one page and everyone pops it into a three-ring binder. So we do have something tangible. Um, so that's an option, too. We don't have to outsource everything. The only thing that we do have to outsource is the big wall maps. Uh, they have a printer upstairs, but I, I don't think it's working. I don't think it's worked for a while. Well, you can get anybody to put it. Exactly. Any, any plot or anywhere. Mm -hmm. any, Forest any service print mm -hmm. out. Forest service print out for you. Mm -hmm. All he needs is a shape file. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying there's, there's multiple fire departments. You have the municipal, you all the different rural volunteer ones. I'm assuming they all, a lot of those guys, they know the area so well as they all live here, so they don't have to ask where something is. But, uh, Occasionally they'll ask the dispatcher, how, where are we going? Where is that new road? And she'll tell them. Or somebody Ooh. will pipe up and say, this is about somewhere, go find it. Most of our nightmare roads are at the south end, mm -hmm. even now. And that was one of those things that when it was designed back and came into fruition back in, I think, 05, 04, and they started developing rolling glens and wheat, Wheatland Meadows and Morning Sky and the western corner, western states, whatever the hell it is, and Mountain Vista, we had a grand plan down there. And which leads me to another issue is that, you know, when the Kavanaugh's failed miserably in, in their development project down there, um, everything that was planned when that was put in place, such as a fire station and a substation for law enforcement, all that went away with it. And now every one of those lots is for sale and they're all getting bought up and getting built on. We don't have the resources down there because there's no grand plan anymore. So that whole Rolling Glen community kind of went out in the sky and now all those places are starting to develop and now we're trying to figure out how to how to resource that area, um, and I think you probably deal with it just as much as we do. Is people come in left and right buying those lots up because taxes are cheaper than they are in Gallatin, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of homes down there, and we don't have the we don't have the infrastructure there to maintain. It. So, um, and that's a, another problem that we have to face. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where you know some of those when when the commission before you all. So they gave their blessing to that community development down there. They never set it in stone that it had to stay in place, and those things still had to be met. Um, you know, there was a there was an agreement between Kavanaugh and, and the commission at the time, I guess, and and now we're paying we're paying for it. So, um, and that's just my two cents on that as well. But we, we need to learn to, to put things in writing and and, and keep them in place. So. Unless I'm wrong. Somebody can tell me I'm full of crap and I'll be okay with it too. So, but. I might add also down that southern end of mile marker 101, that all goes into the Three Forks Rural Fire District in Broadwater County, and their ambulance service serves that area. And I think a lot of their 911 calls used to go directly into the Bozeman and the Lyman one. Sometimes they still do. They still do. They still do. Go in and then they patch them through. There's a lot of development down there, tremendous amount. Fires that have gone down on mutual aid of our county. Yeah. And they don't have the infrastructure to deal with it? No, they respond out of three forks with what they have. And there, you know, there's, there's, I've been talking with developers, it's 
it's going to happen again down in that south end. So. Um, well, they have big, big plans, and they go bankrupt. So the housing market falls, and, and the property values drop. They don't sell a lot of those lots, and they just go bankrupt. I don't know. Bowman's insane right now. And, it, it, and, there's <coughs> mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we're seeing. Is you know that spillover from Bozeman. There's you know a, a major company that's going to be building down there, and you know putting in shops and restaurants. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot that's going to happen down there. Which is only going to bring more people. Um, you know, they're looking at hiring a hundred people right away. So, you know, that's 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 going to happen in that area again. So, anyway, yeah. we need to. You know, we always can learn from our mistakes. I think that's the biggest thing in in, in life, not just here, but you know, they we didn't realize it was broken. It you know it needs to be fixed. So now we just need to fix it. You know, planning planning for the future of the county. Um, you know, things that did work and things that didn't work, and how do we do better? So, I think that's, you know, the biggest thing to take away from all of this is, obviously, we need to do better. So, we'll get on to that. So, thank you for facilitating this. And yeah, so, after this discussion, then, the two department heads will get together and mm -hmm. work this out. delegate to my younger techie guy. I'm not so techie. He'll delegate him. Set. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> no. Well, um, as far as the budget goes, of course, that's coming to an end very quickly. Uh, the document, we could you know, go ahead and get that done, but I think the rest of it could really be handled by you guys and then work with Debbie on the budget side. Well, I think we, you know, I'd like to see how we could actually use that information. I mean, I, I don't know how. I'll, I'll make I, don't know how we, I don't know how we do that, does. but mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be interesting because the stuff you put in. I know the IRS folks have to look at the same stuff, mm -hmm. so you know when they're out doing their tax assessments, they're looking at the same information that you're comp or compiling. So, um, you know, I, I think that I'm here to help, but damn, I mean, there's a point. So, um, I, I guess that's just right. How mm -hmm. I feel about it. And that'll be my first thing that I'll do is I'll make a list of, of everyone that utilizes the information um, and what they utilize it for. So then we can quantify, you know, if someone wants a, a quick map of the county that takes them 30 seconds to print, they pay this, that's nothing. If somebody, you know, realtors that come in and say, well, I, you know, I want to look at this area specifically, um, I make them a map. I don't know, and I guess that, I mean, that's, that's not your problem, but a conversation I need to have with the commission is, do I charge for that? I mean, literally an eight and a half by 11 map, I'm not talking a big wall map, but that takes time. Um, putting together the voting districts for the county, that took me about three months, you know, the commissioner districts and census blocks and putting all of that together, that took me about a month and a half. I didn't send you a bill for it because it's coming out of the general fund, but if it wasn't, it would have been coming out of GIS from the sheriff's office. So. Yeah, I guess I just need to figure out um, really who who requests what and how much time it takes to do that. So. And, and what other departments do that share information is if it's a work product, there's you know just kind of an agreement. But for the public, if they're asking for something above and beyond, they should be paying for it. It shouldn't be all the taxpayers paying for something to get, some one person to get something extra. Right. That one person needs to pay for their own, needs to be responsible to themselves and pay for that. So I guess, you know, if you want to put together some kind of a proposed price list, we mm -hmm. just did it with Doug um, on uh, tax lien okay. stuff. So he's got models. Uh, you can adopt his resolution and, and the language with it um, and just plug in your unique information, but we have yeah. templates mm -hmm. and, that. The, and the frustrating part of that, especially with the, the realtor developer who comes in, you know, they're, if they're from Bozeman, Montana, they're coming in and free information for financial gain for themselves, you know, and it might take you two hours to compile whatever they're looking for. As taxpayers, we're flipping the bill for somebody to come in mm -hmm. to make money and they're not required to do anything for right. it. So, uh, my two cents on that. I keep getting my two cents on have a dollar. Now you got to come work on the <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, you guys. I appreciate you working Thank together you. on this.
and was on anything mm -hmm. after that. This is the only one I was here for, right? Yes, oh. budget. Okay. Did you have the PA seven minute real quick? Okay. Yeah. So the next thing starts at eleven. So. Okay. Um, we got the we did that the transient burial for Jermaine Wells back in June. Um, I got the bill for that. Uh, I talked to, to Mike Stevenson, uh, and he's actually I told him I said here's the deal. Um, this is the way we're going to do these transients, um, and 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 the cost. So. The total bill was sixty-six hundred dollars. I said, "You're out of your mind." Um, he said, I, "No." He says, uh, "The same thing he's doing with Lewis and Clark County is on the transients. They're twenty-three hundred. He breaks it down, and I have the itemized list, so it will come to you guys, so you can actually see what everything costs." Um, one of the things he did talk to me about, and I said, "Write it up, and we'll figure it out," um, because we're, we're we're starting to see this a lot. Is people do not want to be responsible for the. Uh, burying or dealing with their loved one's death. So what they're doing is they're not claiming bodies. And so when a family mom, dad, brother, sister, whatever die, the family member's not claiming it. And and if there's not claimed, then it comes back to the office of the coroner. And it's the coroner's responsibility to, to uh, do something with it. And it's it's just our society we live in now. So it's, it's happening quite often, quite frequently. And so he was trying to figure out how we can come up with something because it's not necessarily a transient, but it's happening. He's dealing with them. He's dealing with four a month where people refuse to claim their loved ones and they have to be dealt with. Um, so he's going to work on putting some stuff together. Just want to give you a heads up on it. Um, we've had three that um, here in the, in the last couple of years, the same thing. People refuse to. Um, they are doing an application process that the county engages with these people that if they're not financially sound enough to uh, acquire the funds to do it that there's a, a process um, and so he's going to work on that and I said when he gets it together we'll come down and visit with you guys about it um, because I don't want to put it under the, a transient type thing the transient fund right now is only a thousand dollars and that to be honest with you doesn't get us anywhere um, and so it's it's been moved. Uh, the, he, he took four thousand change off the bill, and that's with all the, the ruckus that goes with it. So, um, and you know I'm kind of a stickler on those transient ones. They have to clearly be defined. But now now we're just coming into the process where people just refuse to claim their claim their loved ones. So that's a new problem we're going to have. I'm not sure how we address it. I don't think there's anything in MCA that. Um, that I'm aware of uh, that gets us away from a, a not finding a resting place for these folks. I just don't. We might be able to do something different with it, though. If it's an unclaimed one because the family doesn't want to do it, we might get away with a cremation versus a burial. And, and the, the, the questions I've been asked is why would we cremate the transients? Cascade County got sued for quite a bit of money for cremating the transient that they thought was a transient, and then the loved one came out of the woodwork. Uh, so, I can, re I can reverse a burial, I can't reverse cremation. So um, that's why they're buried. Um, and so anything anything we get sued for, they're going to do it. But I just want to give you guys a heads up here in probably the next, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, Mike will bring something in, we'll sit down and talk about these unclaimed ones. It's happened a lot in Great Falls. Um, and actually the funeral homes are, they're stepping away from it. I mean, if it's, they're not claiming, they, they, they walk away from it, they take it back to the market benefits and, and the Cassidy <coughs> County Sheriff's Office has to go up and get that body and do something with it. So um, it's a it's a huge problem around our state right now and, and I, unfortunately I think it's going to come at us sooner than later. So try to get in front of the, put the, put the horse back in front of the cart on that one. But I just want to give you a heads up on it. So, okay? Thank you. I know it's great news to have, right? Um, but I think, you know, it might be something you know, I, I don't know. I, I be yeah, an interesting conversation piece when we get to it. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, do you guys have anything else for me before I walk out? I don't think so. Thanks right. for the update on that. Too. You bet. Sure. And I'll get to that bill you know, on 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 okay. Jerry. So. All right. Okay. And there's going to be. I'm going to have. So I'm going to pop down this poll. Um, I do have um, with her. I, I did put her husband in her, in her box with him. Uh, he 
it was cremated years and years ago. Um, so, but he's got a plaque because he was a Navy veteran, I believe. Um, so he's got a VA plaque that we're going to put a just concrete slab down and put that on and put her marker um, in there with it. So one of these days, I'll snag Eric and, and Mike, and we'll take the mixer out there and pour some concrete and, and get that thing set there. But um, other than that, that, that should all be done and dealt with at this point. So. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. A few minutes away from our next item, but I think we'll go ahead and start on the budget review. Debbie, you probably want to start it and present it to you. Come sit up front. Everyone start. Um, we have work to do. Got some balancing to do. So we have some things to cut um, to fund Corey's needs. General fund, we're going to have to cut. I kind of come up with some numbers. Um, Countywide mills, I think if we cut them about 76% and add those to the general fund, it gives us some options, but I haven't got all the numbers run. I think we'll need to reevaluate the PILT transfers requests that have been asked for this year to help with some of that, because I think PILT's possibly going to be needed to help with some of this, the have-tos to get through this year. We um, need to relook at entitlement, how we distribute that, There's some ideas. It's going to take a little bit of work. Um, played with the permissive in lieu of the general health and increasing and I factored in a 5% possible increase this next year. That gives us a few more meals we can charge to help. So that would offset what the public health fund, because it, it's part of the floating mills. Mm -hmm. So if we include that, um, that might offset some of it. And then I give them some wiggle room next year if the employees pick up more or if the commission picks up any. It gives us some latitude to play with. Um, but the general fund does, we do need to work on it. Um, I can print out PILT stuff to kind of see if we can kind of look at it. Um, there is what we spent last fiscal year, reporting here, you can see where we spent. I also have a spreadsheet that I do as part of the budget so you guys can see where it goes last year and this year, and then what this year's requests are in these little, so you have kind of everything in a nutshell to look at for PILT to decide what is a have to or need to important to spend versus can we wait a year. I went and played with 5% reduction like we suggested, so I got that to look at, plus the 75% cutting your reserves down to 25% will help too. That will reduce some of the meals that people need, that we're sharing with, like museum, fair, um, library, airport, museum, search rescue, to see what we can come up with. I think I got the formulas fixed out on the sheet. And the adjusted value of a mill is a little more than we expected at 3%. It's like 3.8%. It's about 15. Any papers? 9.36? Yes, that sounds right. Did we get any extra mills? 
this year? No. Um, I got it with Harold's help. Winter, I got 